So remember how I was talking about I had to be careful because the relief valve wasn't working the way it was supposed to? Yeah, this is the result of that. So just after I filmed that other video, I was picking up a small little rock and this thing just gave way. So let's get this all fixed up and make it so this doesn't happen again. So I think the uh, the plan of attack here, it's gonna be a little bit tricky because I want the, the rod out as far as I can, but by doing that, it leaves a lot of fluid, leaves a lot of fluid in there. Yeah. So that's why I got these, these things here to catch the fluid. But um, I think the first thing I need to do is, is uh, tap this off. Oh God. You had the rest of the paper towel? They're out here. It shouldn't be going too long. Yeah, yeah, it's almost slowing down now.
grip. And then let it explode. Yep. I don't want a hydraulic fluid bath. What I need to do is just pull on this. so the bucket doesn't decide to run away. Walk of shame. <laughs> now I'll do the drive of shame. So to hopefully never have this happen again. The way I'm going to solve this problem is by using an inline relief valve here. And this is, there's there's a couple different ones that you can get. Some of them are made out of solid aluminum. This is cast iron. And it's really simple. The pressure goes in and out here. It doesn't even matter the direction. It can go either way. And then this is the port that dumps to the tank. And this is the relief valve right here. So this came with plugs on it. But if you were to take the plugs out, you'd be able to see right through here. So you can pretty much put this anywhere as you want, but it would make sense to put it next to this valve. And the side that I really need it on is gonna be clamping down, which is pushing out on the cylinder, pushing the rod out. And that's that hose on the left over there. And if you follow that up and around, that's this hose right here. And if you follow that, that's this hose right here. So I don't really have enough room to do it like this because there's just not enough room going this way. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is switching these hoses over here because they kind of crisscross anyways. This one crosses over like that and then this one crosses over like that. So what I'm going to do is switch them up and then that way this is the hose that I'm trying to solve the pressure problem. And it'll be backwards on the joystick there but I've only used this system a little bit so I'm not even used to it yet. And again, I can always flip-flop these controls if I really need to. So we'll just plan on using it like this. And what's nice about this is, this is the dump port to the tank. So we'll just turn it like this, and put it right in line like that. And then we'll have another hose that goes off of there and goes to the tank. Now on the tank, there's a lot of different fittings that I could tap into. There's this, which I believe is quarter inch. And then there's this, which I believe is half inch. I'm not totally sure about that, but this is three quarter. So I know that that is not three quarter because it's a little bit smaller. I think it would be okay to tie into a half inch port, but I'm not totally sure. I know half inch would be fine for the thumb because it's down to half inch over there right after the quick couplers. So I know half inch would work. The question is whether it would work for another future attachment that something that I would need to use three quarter for. That's the question. So while it would be easy enough to just tie right into that half inch port there, 
I think the better option, the safer option, is to tap into this three quarter inch hose. So I think what I'm gonna do is bring this back to the hydraulic shop that made it, and I'll have them chop it down and put a T in here, and I'll T off of that into here. So when I got to the hydraulic shop and started looking at different options, I went there to try to put a T on this. So since they made this hose, I figured they could put a T on it somehow. I didn't know if they had like a direct T or whether they had to put a JIC and a JIC and, and then put a T fitting in between. And it turns out they don't really have a direct fitting that's a T that can just be crimped onto that. So it would have to be a female JIC to a female JIC and then have a male end JIC T that goes in it. And by the time they were done, there was only like this much hose left on each side with all the fittings in there and stuff. So once they showed me that, I figured that this hose would pretty much become a solid hose that would not even be movable at all. And I do need it to move slightly because this whole assembly moves around from vibrations and stuff. Plus this is not exactly perfectly in line with this. So it needs to flex a little bit. So I got thinking about different options to see if I could avoid doing that. Because the last thing I wanted to do is have them make up that whole assembly and then it didn't work. And then I'd have to go back and have them make another one of these hoses. And that gets really expensive when you're doing that. Plus it's a lot of time. The place is an hour away each way for me. So that's two hours of driving. So instead of teeing into this, what I decided on doing was going into this port right here, which this is a half inch BSPP, which is number eight. And for those of you that don't know, the numbers represent how many sixteenths of an inch it is. So eight sixteenths is half an inch. Uh, 10 sixteenths is five eighths. 12 sixteenths is three quarters. So anyways, what I'm gonna do is take this off. This is just a cap on here. You can see it goes right into the tank. It's like a, a manifold that goes into there for things like what I'm doing, options. So I'm pretty sure this is number eight BSPP, which there's a male on there, I'm pretty sure. Yep. See, it's an inverted flare. So that's just a cap. So I wasn't sure whether it was going to be BSPP or JIC. I pretty much figured it wasn't going to be JIC, but I just got the adapter. So this is a JIC right here, and then it converts to BSPP. So what we're going to do is just tap into the system right there. This 90 on. I got a four foot hose. So now that's tapped into the tank and then I got a four foot hose because I wasn't sure exactly what I needed because I kind of changed directions when I got there. 
but that's okay. So we'll put this relief valve right there. We'll just have a little bit of a loop there. Maybe I can even swing it down out of the way. Something like that. That should be no big deal. I'm pretty sure this will still close. It'll be close, but... Yeah, it doesn't close all the way, but it's like a half an inch from closing. I could maybe make a little notch right here for this hose, but I think it's, it's actually hitting on the top here. I don't think that's a big deal though. I'm actually much happier doing this than trying to put that T in here. This is only half an inch, but I got thinking about it and I, I was looking around on a lot of other relief valves and some of them, a lot of them have the next size down hose. Some of them are even two sizes down for the hose that goes to the tank. So while that took care of that end of it, which saved some grief in that big hose, the other part of this whole equation is that I gotta get this onto here. And in order to do that, the only way I see, first of all, I got, number 12 o-ring boss to go into that block and then I got an extension and then on the other end this is NPT tapered pipe thread and then I figured that wasn't going to be long enough coming out of there so I got an extension which is just a female NPT to a male NPT number 12 so those will just go together which kind of brings it out a few more inches and then I gotta go into this relief valve. And since this port is sticking out like this, I'm not gonna be able to swing it around this thing right here. I'll try. I'll try taking this out. But I doubt it. Worst case scenario is I just gotta take this valve off and then I can put it in there and put the valve back. Just dry fit it. Let's see if that'll work. No, it's just too close. That's not too bad.
Now we got to go from NPT to O-ring boss. The way you can tell it's O-ring boss is it's got like a little chamfer inside there. That way the O-ring seats right on the edge here. Remember I told you guys in the last video this is really good to have. You can't really find it locally, but if you order it online it'll last you a long time. All three ports on here are number 12 NPT, three quarter inch. So that's national pipe thread, tapered. So this hose going to the tank. I got a JIC end, converted it to national pipe thread. It's a good idea to put that on first. So like I said, I need to switch these hoses up because right now that is not the pressure side of the thumb. That's the other side that would retract the thumb. It goes to the rod end to retract the thumb. So we're just going to switch them up over here. So the very last thing I need to do is hook back up that return line to the tank from here that we took off before. So this does stick out further now, but there's nothing, I mean, it's very strong. I don't see any problem with that. I guess the only thing I don't like is this hose being over top of this hose. So I'll take this out real quick and switch it over. There we go. I like that. So I didn't get the rod back from the machine shop yet, but like I did in the last video, I want to try to get everything else situated in the meantime so that when I get that rod back, I can just slam it in there and everything should be good to go. So the other thing that I can do while I'm waiting is check the pressure, maybe adjust it if I need to. They have it preset. I think it was set at like 1400, so I might have to turn it up a little bit. Probably gonna be somewhere around 2000, 1800, something like that. So 
that's obviously really low. That's because I turned down the relief valve on that one-way valve and I never turned it back up. So let's turn that back up first. So that seems like it hit the new relief valve now. It's about, what, 1800? It's pretty far away, I couldn't really see it, but it is leaking down. But there's also air in the lines right now. I could instantly tell that it was using the new relief valve because it makes a different noise now. You can see that that return hose is being flexed. So actually looking at the gauge, it looked like about 2400 PSI. Turn that down a little bit to around 2,000. Let's see if I can get that kind of pressure even at an idle. Eh, 2,000 anyways. So I dropped that rod off three weeks ago today. To get fixed and the guy at the machine shop he he wanted to kind of bend it back but i told him i just want a new rod so i told him order the material you need and just spin me up a new rod because he said whatever direction it got bent if you put the grease fitting on the other side of the eyelet you can flip it around so let's say it was bent that way you can flip the rod around so that the bend would have been like this if you bend it back because the side of the rod that has the bow in it is going to be the weak side because it opens up the pores on the steel. So if you switch it around so it's the other way, then it won't bend as easily, which in this case, the rod was bent this way. So if we turned it this way, then it probably won't bend as easy, but it's also weaker at that point. So that's why I'd rather not try to bend it back, even though it probably would work now that I have the relief valve. I don't want to do that. I just want a new rod. But anyways, it's been there for three weeks. I still haven't gotten a call yet. So I got some other things I want to do with this machine. I want to get it all fixed up so that when I get that rod back, I'll just slip it in there, test it out and good to go. And then I can start doing some projects because I have some projects I need to do with this machine and I don't want to be waiting any longer than I need to. I should have been doing the projects weeks ago. So the one thing I really need to do, a few people noticed it in the last video, and I knew you would, but this bucket is broken right here. It's cracked all the way down to here. So I gotta get that fixed. see that's pretty bad right there luckily I'm doing it now because I think if I use this bucket much longer I could have tore the bottom right off of it it was kind of hard to see for a little while because the bucket was always really muddy but now that everything's dried up it's a lot easier to see so the first thing I got to do is press it back into place I'll put like a piece of steel underneath this side of the bucket push down as hard as I can and then hopefully close that up the best I can and then I'll weld it and then this time I'll put some straps going across it too to hold it better.
don't think anything's hitting in there. It doesn't look like anything is touching, but I'm gonna blast through this with the plasma cutter inside and outside. Just take off a lot of the, the ridges there. And then all it takes is like one little tiny piece and it's holding up the whole thing. So I know it looks like that's hitting, but it's, it's not it's clear all the way through. But there might be something back here that's hitting. I can't see it. So I'm gonna blast through with the plasma cutter and hopefully we can get it pretty close. One thing that I am seeing though is that these teeth are like perfectly lined up right now. So I don't know if we can go all the way because that might make this tooth up like this. But we'll try to get it as close as we can. the best we're gonna get there's about a quarter inch gap in there right now but you know what that's really thick steel right there and that'll help heat up the weld anytime you have a big gap in between two pieces of metal it'll help it'll help the weld get a lot hotter So I ended up welding a plate on here, half inch, beveling it on all sides. The welds aren't that great, but I just got a new welder and I'm trying to get used to it. I, I bought a DC welder, so I'm running the 7018 rods. I'm trying to get it dialed in, but it's not easy because this is like three inches thick and this is like half inch or three quarters. So when you're welding on here, it's a totally different setting than welding here. But this side wasn't really a disattached or anything, but there was a very slight hairline crack going down. So I wanted to make sure it didn't get any worse. So again, I put this half inch plate here, welded all the way around. Like I said, those welds don't look great, but I'm also welding vertical and I'm trying to get used to the new welder. This is the old AC welder I was running and and I got this from my dad who got it from my grandpa who I don't even think he bought it brand new. He probably bought it used. So this thing's probably from like the 60s or something. So it's definitely time to retire that. And I got a Lincoln AC-DC welder. This one's a huge improvement from that other AC machine. But I still got to get used to different settings. You got DC plus and DC minus. And then you got different rods for it too, 7018, but then there's different kinds of 7018s. I never seem to have too many problems with horizontal welding, but when you're vertically welding like this, it's a lot harder to make it look good.
All right, so like I said, I don't know the pressure at which the bucket is running at right now. I could probably test it out some way, but I'm not even gonna get involved in that. Right now, the bucket can't push the thumb, so I'm gonna loosen up the relief valve, the inline relief valve that I just put on right here. I'll just do that until I can push the thumb with the bucket. And then maybe I'll go a little bit past that. Alright, so the plan for this video was to get everything fixed and then kind of tweak it out to make sure that everything is dialed in the way I want it. So I got the pressures dialed in. I already tested it out, picking up a bunch of stuff. It's got plenty of pressure, but yet I can still push the thumb with the bucket. So that's exactly what you want. The other things I wanted to do on this video is just fix up little loose ends here and there. So that hose right there needs to be secured somehow to the boom but I was going over different ways of how to do it and I don't want to secure the rubber hose to the boom what I need to do is attach this back on if you saw the last video you know I took this off this is the hard pipe that was connecting to that shutoff valve right there or the flow valve or whatever you want to call it so I took this off because it just worked out better that the hose went that way instead of angled like this. But I tried this out and it does work for the direction that I want. But the problem is I don't have the right adapter to adapt from here to the hose right there. So I'm not gonna be able to fix that for this video, but I'm gonna order that and then fix it as soon as that comes in. I'm actually much happier with the way that the controls are now because now the left button on there is to close the thumb and the right button is to open it. That just feels much more natural than the other way around. I don't know why it feels more natural because I never had anything on there before and I never had any other machine that was set up like that. So I don't know why, but it just feels so much better. So I have several ponds on this property. This is the original one that was here before I bought the property. And then the other ones I made myself. But. I have a whole bunch of work over here to do. I dug this pond out quite a bit because it was very shallow. And I got all kinds of fill right there. I need to do all kinds of work here because I'm going to be putting a garage right there. And I got the outlet for the pond coming down there and then it takes a sharp right 90 degree angle over here. And then there's a culvert pipe going underneath the road here. which everything is all overgrown right now. But the pond is right there, the outlet's there, and then it makes a sharp 90 degree turn and goes this way. Well, this whole thing right here I need to clear because I need to be able to get semi-truck in here with the low boy and stuff. 
because my garage is going to be over there. So this whole thing needs to be all addressed, but I'm not going to do that in this video. But what I am going to do is clear all this stuff right here so that I can at least see where this culvert pipe is. Because sometimes like UPS drivers, they're not paying attention and they go one time a couple months ago, the UPS driver actually one of his tires went in there and his other tire was like six feet off the ground. So I want to make it so that you can see this area. So there's a lot of like overgrown brush here and everything is dry right now. There's no water running in here. Usually there's water running all year, but it's been so dry. But I just want to get this area cleaned up. So I figured that's a good little test for that thumb because there's some brush to pick up. There's some big boulders to pick up. Perfect for the thumb. And we'll just kind of clear this up. I'll make a pile with it. So I got a lot more work to do around here and that'll be in different videos getting ready for this garage. It's gonna go right there. So right now I'm at the apex of the corner where the water goes. It goes out like this and then goes straight that way. So what I need to do for the long-term solution is change the outlet from there to there and then I'll come out here and swoop around with the culvert pipe over to there. That way because right now there's no culvert pipe anywhere there. If there was, I'd have a much wider swing in here, but I don't want to put one there because I want to change the inlet to the culvert pipe to be somewhere around here, and go straight that way.
now I can actually see the culvert pipe there and I got a log there to kind of signify that that's the edge. Got this cleaned up a little bit. I also widened it out a little bit there so that when the water's coming out fast, it doesn't have to make a 90 degree bend. You can kind of take the inside of the corner now too. So like I said, the plan is to add a few more culvert pipes onto that, bring them way over here, and then I can fill all this in, and then I can bring my low boy in here and swing right around here, no problem. Right now what I was doing is bringing the trailer up and then I can back it in here like that because that corner is widened out enough. But it would be so much nicer if I could just come in forward like this. And then go over there and there's my garage. Same thing with those big 53 foot trailers. I can't make the bend going this way, but if I just go straight in and then I can back in or I can go straight in, do a bunch of work to turn around over there and then come in this way. But that's the ideal way to go. It, it's not so important right now because I don't have a garage there, but once I do, I want to be able to work on everything and I want to be able to store all my equipment over here. Trailers, trucks, excavators, dozers, whatever, cranes, all kinds of things down here. So this will all be cleared out and we'll put a big garage in there. As soon as I'm done with my house, I'm going to start working on that, but I still got a lot of work to do. But anyways, this thumb works out pretty good now. You can see I can push the thumb with the bucket. That's always the goal. That should always be the goal. And I got plenty of pressure still, even though I can push it. I got plenty of pressure to pick up whatever I want, no problem. And I think if I had a progressive link thumb, I wouldn't have bent the rod like I did because the thumb was pushed all the way down and that's its weakest point because first of all, the rod is all the way extended. Second of all, you're pushing on it like this with a lot more force. When it's like this and you're pushing on it, then there's not so much force on it. So there was two things working against me with that. And that's why that rod bent. I got that relief valve dialed right in. So now it's perfect the way I want it. And it picks up everything I need, no problem. It holds it with no problem without having to press and hold the button. So now all I gotta do is just get that hose secured over here. And this machine is ready to bring to a job. So I do have a few jobs coming up for it. And we'll get into that pretty soon. And I'll see you guys on those videos.